in this lesson we're going to have a look at what integration with limits actually does. So let's start off by putting an example graph. So here's an example graph here, y equals f of x. I'll write that down, y equals f of x. Now say I want to estimate the area shaded between that curve and the x-axis. What I could do is approximate the area using two rectangles as follows. But you see there that that's not a perfect approximation. There's a bit of a gap there. So my approximation will actually give extra area leading to an overestimate. So how about if I try using more rectangles? So you can see that whilst not perfect still, there's a lot less area above the curve extra. So that's gonna give a better estimate. And what we could do is keep using more and more rectangles, making that area smaller and smaller and smaller. But what actually happens when we use an infinite number of rectangles is that area now becomes exact. It's no longer an estimate. So when the rectangles become infinite in number and infinitely thin, that's when we get a true value for what the area between the curve and the x-axis actually is. And that is what integration does. Integration sums a number of infinitely thin rectangles between the two limits you set on the integral. So we have an infinite number of rectangles here that are infinitely thin, i.e. lines, if you like. And that's what integration does. Integration between the two limits will get us that area. And the way we write that in mathematical notation is the integral between two limits, let's call them B and A, of any function f of x dx equals the limit as delta x approaches zero of the sum between x equals a and b of f of x times delta x. Let's explain what this means because this is important notation that could come up in an exam. So the integral between two limits b and a, so in that diagram there, that's b and that's a. Forget about this limit as delta x approaches zero for now. Let's look at f of x times delta x. Well, f of x is the height. and delta x is the width of a rectangle. So we're saying f of x multiplied by the width of the rectangle. And we're making these rectangles smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where they're infinitely thin, i.e. have width zero. So when we have an infinite number of rectangles that are infinitely thin, summing their areas is the integral. So an example of a question that uses this notation is one like this here. Calculate the limit as delta x approaches zero of the sum between two and three of f of x delta x, where f of x equals x squared plus two. Well, we know from what we've just learned that this notation means integration. That's actually asking us to sum all the infinite number of rectangles infinitely thin between three and two of x squared plus two with respect to x equals, well let's integrate, remember it's add one to the power, divide by the new power, plus two x between three and two equals three cubed over three plus two lots of three, take two cubed over three plus two lots of two, which is equal to, and let's put that in the calculator, three cubed over three, plus two lots of three, take all of two cubed over three, plus two lots of two, which is equal to 25 over three. 
and there we have it summing an infinite number of rectangles to get the area between a curve and the x-axis.